From the silver screen to the frayed gothic tomes to what goes on in my basement at the weekend, we as an audience can't seem to get enough of being scared. But in some cases, directors committed to the pursuit of panic offer blur the line between film and reality, pushing their talent to extreme lengths. Little did the poor entrants on this list know that instead of picking up a check with more zeros than the new Mills football team and heading back to their rum-powered personal islands, that instead they would be subjected to fear much greater than that presented in their scripts. I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com and here are 10 times horror got a little too real for these actors. Number 10. Shelley Duvall Stanley Kubrick is to directing what walking in on your parents during coitus is to your mental well-being, in that he's strange, his tactics unnerving, and he never fails to leave an impact. One such impact was upon actress Shelley Duvall, who took the role of Mrs. Torrance in the 1980s adaptation of Stephen King's The Shining. Not content with having a young actress scared to death by Jack Nicholson's eyebrows, axe stalking, or the prospect of heat exhaustion due to ineffective air conditioning on set, Kubrick, being the lovable care bear he was, decided to step up to the plate and personally torment her. Berating her for the slightest mistakes and informing her repeatedly that she was worthless, Kubrick sought to break down Duval into a shivering wreck so that he could capture her subsequent mental distress on camera. The pinnacle of this came from a record-breaking 127 retake shoot in which Duval had to hit Nicholson on the head with a baseball bat. The scene reportedly caused Duval to begin losing hair and suffer from severe panic attacks. In an offhand remark years later, Kubrick noted that he thought it might help get her frustrations out. So you see, he was just trying to help. What a kind and gentle monstrosity he was. Number 9. Marilyn Burns The Texas Chainsaw Massacre sounded like a truly awful filming experience for those on set. From extreme heat waves to raw, rotting meat playing host to swarms of angry flies, the cast and crew were regularly passing out or becoming extremely nauseous. Now, as any dominatrix fan can tell you, leather is hot. Leather Face, the large angry man who done did all the murders in this film, was also very hot. I, I mean, not in a physical sense, but in a very literal one. As Gunnar Henderson, the man behind the streaky bacon wraps, was struggling daily with simply staying conscious. Not helping the matter was the captain of this corpsey ship, Tobe Hooper, and boy was he setting sail for the shores of psychological abuse. He came up with the brilliant and totally not at all harsh idea of making Henderson hide from the rest of the cast, so that his reveal would be all the more shocking. But you'd be a fool for thinking he had a nice airy trailer to do so, and instead Gunderson had to endure the Texan heat in full get-up and a mask which he was explicitly told not to remove. Oh, and to add to this, he only had one of these costumes, so after four straight weeks of shooting, he was more akin to a walking abattoir than he would have ever liked. No wonder he was flailing about at the end of the film, as probably the only way to air out his pits. Number 8. The Crew of the Nostromo In space, no one can hear you scream. But on the set of Ridley Scott's Alien in Shepperton Studios, everyone must have heard the cries of terror when the infamous chestburster scene rolled round. Up to this point, the cast had been well informed about what was going on in the film. What to do, where to stand, how to avoid looking at Lance Henriksen's five head. However, when they arrived at this section, in the script all it said was, It emerges. Upon being called down to the set, the cast was surprised to see all the other crew members in raincoats with plastic coverings on all the cameras. When asked, Ripley Scott simply told them to move to their places and react to what was about to happen. As we can see in the film itself, the sudden arrival of the meatworm caused hysteria to break out. Veronica Cartwright, who played Lambert, passed out, and Yafet Koto stated that following the scene, he'd locked himself away in his room for the rest of the day. Blood, body parts, and some of the most convincing practical effects really made the crew experience true terror. And the patron saint of Scott was there to lap it all up on camera. Number 7. Linda Blair Who doesn't love films with young puking girls using crucifixes as marital aids? Just me? Okay. The Exorcist was a bigger hit than Mike Tyson's left hook and about as brutal. Twisted necks, language that would make a dock worker cry, and more falling priests than you can shake a Bible at. And at the centre of it all was a young actress by the name of Linda Blair. At only 13 years old, Blair was given a crash course in what to expect from a virgin holiday with an all-you-can-eat week-old shrimp buffet, or as some might call it, hell. In one of the most pivotal moments of the film, Reagan's demon host puts on a vulgar display of power that puts Pantera to shame and violently throws her body around, slamming it into the bed again and again. The bed slammed Blair about and retracted so quickly that she free fell into a series of blows again and again. The screams in this scene are 100% real, and at the time no one was the wiser. Blair was nearly knocked unconscious and carried bruises on her scalp throughout the rest of the filming. 
Now that's what I call a bed sore. Janet Lee. Right, imagine you're taking a shower. The water is warm, you're singing the latest and therefore greatest Kanye West song, and then some dusty old crone barges in and stabs you up something fierce. Firstly, rude. Wait until I have a towel on before you spill my vino pour favor. Secondly, oh my god, that's utterly terrifying. That's the scene which shocked, stunned, and even caused audiences to faint from Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. Janet Lee was the victim, given a very hands-on display on how a knife works by Anthony Perkins, who's dressed up as his dead mum. One of the most affected by this scene was Lee herself, as despite, you know, being there to film it, when she saw the final version, complete with those oh-so-stabby backing strings, she was sent into a state of pure shock. For weeks she began to turn over the thought of being assaulted as she showered, and soon it became too much for her to bear. So she vowed to never shower again, instead she only chose to use baths, which in my mind seems like a bit of a step backwards, as it's a damn sight harder to hop out of a bath when a stab-happy senior citizen comes round, <laughs> I can tell you. Number 5. Malcolm McDowell The film, A Clockwork Orange The actor, Malcolm McDowell The location, a black room with a film projector, a chair, and a ruddy great device which looks like a pair of angry robotic crabs fighting over your eyelids. In this scene, McDowell is forcibly subjected to brainwashing. He's drugged with a fear and nausea-inducing chemical and then has his eyes held open while a series of extreme images are shown to him. Sounds like a treat. As you might have guessed by now, old QB is not part of the one-and-done club when it comes to takes, and requested multiple reshoots of this harrowing section of the film. Problem was that, in order to do this, that McDowell had to have his eyes pinned back every single time. Adding to this was the fact that he suffered temporary blindness and a scratched cornea, ouch, from this metal face hugger-esque machine. Kubrick, we love you, but you are a monster. Number 4. Tippi Hedren if you're going to work on a horror film entitled The Birds, then you should probably check to make sure that you're not deathly afraid of them. Tippi clearly didn't get this message, as she showed up to filming on the Hitchcock classic, openly stating that nearly all avian varieties terrified her. Now, we at home can rightly question why she thought that it was a good idea to work on this film, but it might have come down to the fact that Hitchcock had pursued the actress, almost demanding that she take the role. Also, he promised that she would only interact with mechanical birds, and that the use of real birds would be kept to shots well out of her vicinity. Hitchcock, being the ham-filled scamp that he was, decided that in order to get the most out of his actress, that he would just go ahead and throw a metric ton of birds in her general direction. And by general direction, I mean face, eyes, the whole exposed upper head region. As a result, Hedron left the set with bruises, cuts, and even deeper emotional scarring. Naughty visionary director, you. Number 3. Mia Farrow If you were on the set of Roman Polanski's fetal frightener Rosemary's Baby, then you would have probably thought that the director hated lead actress Mia Farrow. In one scene, Farrow had to push a baby carriage into traffic and would almost be hit by a car. The problem was that Polanski hadn't arranged any of this with a stunt driver, and Farrow was none the wiser. The reactions and near misses in this scene were genuine, and it was only after that he mentioned to Farrow that he was sure she'd be safe, because no one would hit a pregnant woman. He also allowed a messenger on set to serve Farrow divorce papers from her soon-to-be ex Frank Sinatra, in front of the whole crew, top man. And in a particularly malicious sounding incident, made Farrow consume raw chicken liver again and again through numerous reshoots. Oh, I should probably have mentioned that Farrow was a vegetarian, and Polanski was well aware of this. Number 2. The cast of Blair Witch A crew of three students set out to investigate the mad madam of Maryland, and spooky times ensue. Spooky trees, spooky sounds, basically all the things that Shaggy from Scooby-Doo would have termed as zoinks. Now, the idea of being hunted down in the woods by a wicked Wiccan would be terrifying enough, but the three actors were informed that they would only receive minimal contact with the director and other crew in the mornings to be told where to go and to be given some rations. That meant that for the majority of filming, they were totally, and in a few cases, actually lost in the woods. But surely the directors would have taken sympathy on their leads and gone to find them, right? Well, yes, this is true, but they did so under the cover of night, and only to absolutely mess with their heads. Barraging through the campsite, stealing and throwing supplies into the woods, and making sounds more terrifying than a Slayer release, the directors and crew tormented the actors every single night. Plus, they weren't informed as to when the witch would whisk them away, so when it happened, those were true moments of terror for the actors left behind. Number 1. Carl Richards Portraying the character Lindsay when Richards was just a young un herself, she was subjected to seeing the silent, creepy, and downright murder-you-after-sexy-times Michael Myers. 
Richards began to obsess that she was being followed by the silent stalker, picturing him behind curtains or under her bed, and soon it became so bad that she effectively moved into her parents' room in order to feel safe. Richards went on to state that she would never act in a horror film again, to which she's been true to her word, unless you count her role in the awful piece of awful that was the hungover games. Shame. 